tech rabbit here. Oh, it's time to move the servers into the the tech rabbit um, data center. So let's get on to it. So that's the package ready to go to the data center. Uh, all the cables, the switch, and the two servers. Okay. So if you want to transport servers to a data center, then you need to have the correct transport equipment. And, uh, obviously, need to make sure that the servers are going to be protected. So We need to have the correct lifting equipment. Of course, a reliable driver. So, anyway, here we are. Uh, and if we're going to set up the data center, we need a, a proper rack, you know, HP approved and everything. And then, of course, you know, we need to have a cooling system and a reliable cooling system so that we can keep the servers cool. So, anyway, the uh, next activity is to try and get the server here. Or one of the first. corner to be held up. To move the cooling out of the way. Everything is down on everything. Very small space. Yeah. So now I can uh, connect the cables. Oh, 
Oh, we actually had three. No, I need four. No, uh, two for the power, three and four. Yeah, I need four. <laughs> Always the, the case with... I didn't want to use this crappy thing. But I don't think I have an alternative. That one's on three. Oh, wait, look. Look what we found. So I'll have to zip tie together. Place. Just remember not to plug the servers into the power. It's rather cold in here still. Let's say eight, eight Celsius. So in our, our region of the world, this is um, this is uh, we actually have quite good weather for service for about I would say nine months of the year, and then there's two two months that this uh, setup will probably not be realistic. I might actually have to come and shut down the servers periodically. You know, in a big data, data center like this, you know, one, one has to actually color code the you know, separate connections, otherwise one's going to just lose, lose track of everything. So, so this is going to be a red server. I don't know if you've experienced cables in cold weather, but that, that's, that's what you get. They're totally... Well, I mean, it would be worse if it was the middle of the... We're, we're having a spring when I'm installing this. Our, our type of springs. Oh, modules. I'm saying to myself... Now there's one detail I forgot to mention when we were going over these, that this here is like a lock, and you can actually, I hope you can see it, but there's actually a locking mechanism there. So um, when you put it in, in, then you should actually turn that down, 
so then it locks in. I think I forgot. So. It the opposite direction. No? Why does that not seem to be working? But I looked at the locking mechanism, it doesn't seem to work if I have it in the way I said that I should put. That is true. Ah, is it for the fiber optics? No, but that wouldn't make sense. I don't know what I'm gibbering about. <laughs> well, that doesn't that doesn't seem to work. Maybe somebody can explain in the comments. Was that I did check that locking mechanism. But anyway, now we have the those cables. That's for the ILO. So we're going to um, have that on the network. And then we have the two car cables. And we need to try and. <sighs> I need to put the keyboard in this thing. So then I need this free. Okay, sacrifice. Just a little bit. A little bit of space. Oh, I can still get at the hard drives because they're over here. Problem because I want to actually. And these I really need to, really, really need to cut. And the knife is behind the camera. Sorry. Cardboard. 
It's not going to be straight anyway. Oh. This is how you build a server when you don't have the money to buy real money. Cables on this one. logical thing to do, but recommend it. Um, that'll be the same for this then, with the cables.
So, here we go. And this only has one power supply and I'm okay with that. Actually, these power supplies on the seller side, they're very cheap. So if I wanted to get an extra power supply, I think it's like $20. So you could actually make it redundant quite easily. Oh, the I.O. is going to be white. That's the I.O. port. And then this is going to be a blue server. This actually has four, four network outlets, but I don't use two. And even that's overkill. Take into account that I only have one gig capacity. Okay, gloves. This. Should complain to manage and get a proper data center. <sighs> okay, so that's that one. Oh. Solution, but at least better than nothing. And my Enterprise switch. As you see, it's got a little bit of margins for. Sponge. This is Lucent Alcatel switch. You can stack these and put a fast connection between the two and it will automatically configure it. So, so I was thinking I should have bought more. I, I got these off a of seller site, site for like thirty dollars each. <laughs> I bought two of them. I thought I could buy like ten. It was just like, but then uh, it has three fans, so it's it's re relatively noisy. And the reason it was so cheap. Yep, I know, I know. Don't get on my case. This hasn't got a ten gig output uh, for the uplink. It's only one one. You can have one gig or one gig fiber modules. But um, for for my use, for for thirty dollars, I'll take. I'll upgrade later. I am one day going to take fiber from this data center into the house. But, um, yeah. Of 
Actually, I have like wiring rules for your network. If you're running apartment data center. So, um, yeah. Oh. Um, decide to have uh, that one in there. Um, decide to. Oops. The thing is that. I didn't read the instructions. The what are what are the, what are the um, how the ports share the um, switching infrastructures? I think those actually there are shared ports. long strips. I don't think I can do it now. Could I? for a servers. The bad tendency of starting immediately when the power comes on. So to finish connecting everything up.
Let's slide. Symmetry thing. Oh, this one will come here. I think kind of everything's sort of ready to go. Um, power switch for that other one is not easy to come on. Okay, so now is it uh, power up time then? Okay, um, I'll either blow up or work. It's seven, it's eight Celsius. So, of course, they're going to get a little thermal shock. See if they start up automatically or. My experience with these servers, they're built. odd. Sometimes when you, like, you, you've had them totally powered off with the power cable disconnected, and then you put the power cable connected in, sometimes they just, sometimes they have started automatically, just like right off the bat, and then sometimes you, they, they actually wait for you to press the stand -up. But of course, from a power outage perspective, they should start. Hey, I haven't got the coolie. Probably seven Celsius is a bit too cold. So. Oh, no, so hot. So I suppose we should. Let's see if the ILO interfaces are up. No, this, this switch takes a while to boot up. I would argue at least two or three minutes. So it's, it's got an operating system in it. And as I said, in this, and when it gets really hot in the summer, then I'm going to actually do this. I want to at least have a little bit of air flowing through all the, all the different devices. I just want to see if the ILO interfaces start up. They should, they should run independently. Bingo, we have ILO. Oh, we have main networking also, right? So, anyway, let's see what happens when we start. See if they survive transport, but I was very careful. Mm. 
Yeah, day to summer feeling. Oh, well, they're gonna be so cold out here in the winter. We get max, I think, absolutely maximum in this region, minus 35 Celsius. Average, average cold winter temperature, minus 10 Celsius. I would say minus five is probably more for everyday living, minus five Celsius. I have a raspberry pie here and it's been it through the whole winter and it hasn't broken. And then of course this has discs also. Oh, disc activity back. I was really, really scared that the top server um, didn't display any disc activity. I was like, oh crap. It seems to be going through the good season. Oh wait, I need to um <laughs> My main network's not connected, but I haven't connected it yet. So these poor things are stand alone. Yeah. I forgot to do that. Just a second. I'm focus it. Focusing on connecting the whole main net or everything else except for the main network. First I put this one. Be a nice symmetric one. Now, now it's connected to the house number. But now I have this disconnected. Um, I have another um, switch here. It's now not connected. their normal operation mode. Ah, no, that. That's temporary. Let me get to the summer temperatures. Uh, so I have one. Oh, what am I bringing extra? I'm, I'm down one network kit. I don't think I have any extras in here. Because I would like to connect. So now we have a Raspberry Pi. And the same switch as the servers. And, um, let's see now. Oh, oh, a little bit too many windows. Oh, I could have checked with IF content. Oh, so I load everything. And using this to test the network. So at least we have a network connection from here. So anyway, while that's running, since we have multitasking, then we can have a look at... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So that was the gold menu, of course. Uh, it's a long time ago since I've actually used the uh, file manager. Ah, here we go. Nice long list. And the servers are, if I can even remember what they're called. That is the Windows Server. Where's the other one? Then? Is it under work? Oh, I wonder if it's that one. User. -y. So, at least one of the servers is working, so that's the um, uh, Windows server. Oops. So, uh, server that's working. Now I need to find the Ubuntu server. So, it was that we. Oh, I really need to change these machines now. So, it's a user 3492 is the um, my Ubuntu server. Now, one forgets these things when it's mapped already in, on your desktop, and you just tend to. Forget what they're called after all. Okay, so that means that we have locally two um, servers up and running. Um, everything's picking up IP addresses, so the traffic from the house should be fine. The, I can access the internet from the Raspberry Pi. So that means that um, yeah, I was looking up some data on the internet. Will help. So um, the internet is working. So that kind of wraps it up, I think. So anyway, that's done. Both servers are available even on the um, house network, which is not surprising based on what we already um, tested. Um, so anyway, I hope you found this informative. Some knowledge about data center setups. And um, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you thought the video was worth it. Uh, if you would um, like to buy some merch, um, it's the link is in the description. Or if you just want to buy me a cup of coffee, there's a link for that also. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.